what is up people and today I want to make another video um, this one is about kubernetes objects and yaml and it's confusing for a lot of developers i deal with a lot of teams that have to access multiple kubernetes environments and when they're dealing with yaml you have ingress objects you have service objects you have de deployments you have pods you have daemon sets all these types of objects and some of them have to be connected like an ingress has a port needs to be connected to a service We're using label selectors that port has to map the service port then you have a service that label selects a deployment and then you have like the service has a port which maps to a deployment container port and if some of these things are not configured correctly um, you cannot get traffic to your pod and this is a problem I find with a lot of teams also a lot of developers come from a Windows background they don't use the command line a lot and if you're not able to navigate these objects fluently it's really hard to troubleshoot now Kubernetes has a dashboard but the problem is the dashboard doesn't receive much love and the dashboard runs inside the cluster and a lot of teams work on multiple Kubernetes clusters. So they have maybe two or three development environments, they have a staging cluster, they might have a few production clusters. So how do you troubleshoot this and get a nice overview um, of your clusters? Now VMware have deployed um, a tool called Octant, which is a new dashboarding tool for Kubernetes that they've built. So I wanna run over this tool and give you guys an overview of what it looks like and we're gonna go ahead and build this tool in Docker and run it. Let's go. Right, here we are, Project Octant. So what is Project Octant? It is a web-based tool and it's designed to enhance the developer experience for folks that deploy applications onto Kubernetes. So let's take a look at some of the features. So we have the resource viewer. This is a graphic visualization of all the um, components running in Kubernetes. So it shows you the object relations. So ingress pointing to a um, service which points to a pod. So helps you debug these relationships also for RBAC rules. Um, there's a summary view so that helps you get an overview of the cluster of all the components running It has a one-click button for just port forwarding to a pod, which is pretty cool I'm going to show you guys that in a sec um, also has a live log view um, stream of the pod so you can connect to any pod and see the logs and if you have a microservices running on Kubernetes and you label every microservice um, and all its components, you can organize all your workloads using a label filter. So you can basically narrow down all the objects and just look at the microservice components. And then we have cluster navigation, so you can easily switch between namespaces and different clusters. And this is the plugin system. This is the part I like because this opens up the floodgates for the community to build and expand this tool. So let's get started. So to install this tool, you're gonna to wanna to head over to the release page. If you go on the release page, you see there's a Debian um, package. So if you're on Linux, you just download and install that. If you're on Windows, you wanna download and extract this um, zip file and extract it to a path that you know where you want the utility to run and then take that path and open up your environment variables and set it into your path environment variable. Similarly to how you install kubectl. Basically what this utility does is it uses the cube config that your kubectl uses to discover and navigate the clusters and it uses your permissions. So once it's in your path, um, you can open up a terminal and just type octant and it'll run on this port. But for those who know me, um, I'm going to do everything the hard way. I have a Docker uh, files repository. I have an octant Docker file. So I'm going to go ahead and install um, this utility in Docker. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and uh, build this now. So I'm going to say docker build. There it 
There it is. So we have Project Octant up and running. So this gives a really nice overview of workloads, load balancing components, storage and config, um, also RBAC, and then a cluster overview of RBAC rules as well, and nodes and port forwards. You can filter at the top here, look at different namespaces, and on the right hand side here, you can switch clusters. So this gives us a nice little overview of our, of our cluster. We can go ahead and select my namespace for my website. So that's my website namespace. If we go over, over and workloads, we can see everything that's running in this in this um, cluster. So I've got deployments, bunch of microservices, bunch of pods, replica sets, and then I can further dive down into all these types of workloads. I can also dive into ingresses and service, config maps, secrets, service accounts. One of the cool things is the, the label feed, uh, filtering. So if I, let's say I'm working on a specific microservice and I applied that label on all of the components for that microservice, I can just go ahead and click one of these labels that'll apply a filter. So now I narrow down all the components that I'm looking at and I'm only looking at the, the stuff I'm interested in for the specific microservice. So labels are important. So you can go into any one of these workloads and see all the metadata. So if I go into one of these pods, I can see all the metadata, um, statuses, metadata, the pod conditions, um, pretty much everything related to this pod. And you can jump into cron jobs, you can run, run into daemon sets, deployments, services, ingress, and what have you. So it's really, really cool to explore um, cluster components. Now let's take a look at the resource viewer. When you're in any resource, you get this resource viewer option. And when you click that, you get a little map of all of the resource and all its dependencies. So I went into a pod and we can see the pod here. It's related to a service. So there's a service pointing traffic to the pod. There's also a service account related to the pod. And the pod's also part of a replica set that's tied to a deployment. This is really cool to kind of see all the dependencies of cluster components when you have to troubleshoot them. And I get this problem often when um, you're deploying microservices to different Kubernetes clusters and you have one Kubernetes cluster that's slightly misconfigured what happens is that service has like an intermittent outage intermittent problem so what we do is we can go over to the ingress section and this is why i find this really useful you click on the ingress and this is the ingress for my for my website so as soon as you hit my um, dns you end up hitting this frame service backend but let's take a look at the resource viewer for that and we can see that we have a ingress component that's tied to a service deploy that ties to a pod. So we can see our ingress is okay. And this tells me that we've successfully connected up all the components. So if there's any problem within a configuration, we'll be able to pick it up through here. So Octant also supports a port forwarding feature. So if you dive into any pod, and I find this really useful for developing locally. So let's say I am working on for example, the content service, and I'm gonna to need to connect to the footer and the header service. So I can go into the footer service. This is one of my microservice pods, and I can go ahead and start a port forward. Now look what this does. Collapse this to the side. We can see that this opened up a port forward over here to that pod. Now, if I go back, let's say I want, to, I want the header service as well. I can go to the header service and also start another port forward. And if we go here, we can see now we have two port forwards running. So this allows me to actually run one microservice and I can now point that microservice to the header and the footer service and I can start working locally and actually work against a running cluster. And then when I'm done, I can go to this port forward section and I can see all my running port forwards that I'm currently, that I currently have active. This is really cool for developing remotely. The other cool thing is it also has a YAML viewer. So if you found a problem using the resource viewer and you want to dive in and see what's uh, configured, you can hit the YAML button and this will give you the YAML file um, for, your for your cluster components. And then you also have the log section. So if I click this, I can see um, the, the live logs of my, of my pod. And then finally down the bottom here, you've got plugins. So you get configurations and you've got plugins. And this is where I think the things are gonna get really interesting because this is like, as I said, this is the flood, floodgates 
for the massive community of Kubernetes to start adding plugins to this. I'm going to be really, really excited to see what um, plugins come out of the community. So I'm going to keep an eye on this. You can also dive into nodes. So if there's a problem with one of the nodes on your cluster, you'll be able to look at its status here. Um, you can see the version of Kubernetes that's running, all the different labels. You can then click into the node, see the configuration of it, see all the metadata, annotations, its address, resources, conditions, and all the Docker images that are running on that node. Anyways, guys, thanks uh, uh, for watching this video. I'm really excited to see where this project is going. I'm really going to advocate this project a bit um, and test drive it and start using it myself. Uh, hopefully it will help troubleshooting stuff in Kubernetes and really expand, you know, the developer experience. So yeah, head over to um, their GitHub repo, try it out um, and yeah, show some love and like and subscribe if you guys enjoyed the video and leave a comment below and until next time, peace. Man,